In the dying days of World War II, as Nazi Germany collapsed on every front, their engineers came up with one of the strangest weapons ever imagined, a supersonic fighter jet powered not by oil, not by rockets, but by coal. Yes, coal. And if that wasn't insane enough, the plan was for this flying triangle to ram straight into Allied bombers at blistering speeds. Was this a miracle weapon that came too late, or just a desperate fantasy born from a crumbling empire? Let's dive into the story of the Lippish P-13A, the coal-powered kamikaze jet that almost took flight. By late 1944, Germany was running out of everything, soldiers, fuel, and even time. On the Eastern Front, the Red Army was steamrolling through Eastern Europe with overwhelming numbers. In the West, the Allies had landed in France and were pushing ever closer to the German heartland. For the first time, the Reich faced a full-scale two-front war it simply couldn't win. And then came the fuel crisis. The oil fields in Romania were lost, Allied bombers were torching synthetic fuel plants, and convoys bringing supplies were being sunk one after another. Germany's once mighty Luftwaffe, which had dominated the skies early in the war, was now crippled by empty fuel tanks. Every drop of petroleum was worth its weight in gold. If the Germans wanted a new fighter, it couldn't depend on oil at all. That's where Alexander Lippisch entered the story, a brilliant but eccentric aircraft designer who was convinced that the only way forward was to build something radically different. His idea? A jet that didn't guzzle scarce aviation fuel, but instead ran on one of the few resources Germany still had in abundance. Lippisch wasn't some unknown dreamer by this point, he already had a reputation as a bold innovator. Earlier in the war, he had been the driving force behind the Messerschmitt ME-163, the world's first rocket-powered interceptor. It was tiny, lightning-fast, and completely unlike anything else in the skies. But it came with a fatal flaw. Its engine guzzled volatile rocket fuel that was incredibly scarce and dangerously unstable. The ME-163 killed almost as many German pilots as it did Allied bombers. Still, the concept fascinated Lippisch. He believed small, unconventional interceptors could change the air war. If Germany could mass-produce cheap aircraft that relied on alternative fuels, they could overwhelm Allied bombers without draining the last reserves of petroleum. This vision led to a string of radical prototypes, the P-11, the P-12, and eventually the P-13. Each version pushed the limits further, and by late 1944, his idea had evolved into something truly bizarre, a delta-winged jet powered not by oil or rockets, but by coal. On paper, the P-13A looked like something from a science fiction sketchbook. Instead of the sleek, familiar shape of a fighter plane, it was essentially a flying triangle, a sharp delta wing with a huge vertical fin sticking out of the top. And here's the strange part. That massive fin wasn't just for stability. It actually doubled as the cockpit. The pilot literally sat inside the tail, perched on top of the engine like a passenger strapped to a rocket. At the nose of the jet sat a wide intake for a ramjet engine. Unlike traditional engines, a ramjet couldn't even function until the aircraft was already flying at high speed. That meant the P-13A needed help just to get started. It could be launched from a catapult, boosted by rockets, or even carried into the air piggyback style by another plane before being released to hunt Allied bombers. It was radical, impractical, and completely unlike anything the Allies had ever seen. But the strangest detail wasn't the shape or even the bizarre launch system. It was the fuel. This futuristic jet wasn't designed to burn gasoline, kerosene, or even liquid rocket fuel. Instead, it was built to fly on lumps of coal. So how exactly do you power a supersonic jet with coal? Lippish's solution was as bizarre as it was desperate. Inside the giant intake at the front of the P-13A sat a metal mesh basket packed with small chunks of coal. Once ignited, the coal would release gases, mostly carbon monoxide, which would then mix with compressed air rushing in at high speed. That explosive mixture would ignite and blast out the back, creating thrust. On paper, it almost sounded clever. Coal was cheap, plentiful, and one of the last resources Germany still had left. But in reality, there was one massive problem. Ramjet engines need incredible airflow to function, which meant the P-13A couldn't even start its engine on the ground. It needed to be flung into the air at high speed before the coal would ignite properly. And even if it did work, no one knew whether the coal would burn evenly enough to keep the jet stable. In fact, the design never got far enough for a powered test flight. It remained an idea, equal parts desperate innovation and wild fantasy.
But even if the engine had worked, there was another problem, a big one. This jet didn't just have an unusual fuel source, it was missing something far more important. Weapons At first glance, the P-13A looks like a fighter jet, but when you study the blueprints, you notice something strange, there's almost no room for weapons. Designers floated the idea of fitting a pair of 20mm cannons, or maybe some machine guns, but the aircraft was so small and so oddly shaped that nobody was sure if it could even carry them without crippling performance. So what was the real plan? This is where things turned dark. The main idea wasn't to shoot Allied bombers out of the sky at all, it was to smash into them. The P-13A was essentially a kamikaze jet. Its wings were built extra thick, with reinforced leading edges designed to slice through the tails and wings of heavy bombers. A single strike at high speed could cripple an aircraft, sending it spiraling down before the crew even knew what happened. The pilot's role was just as grim. After ramming one bomber, he was expected to circle back and try again until his aircraft was too damaged to continue. At that point, he would eject and parachute to safety, at least in theory. A skid was eventually added to the underside of the fuselage, giving pilots a slim chance of landing. But realistically, the odds of surviving more than one mission in a coal-powered flying battering ram were close to zero. It was brutal, it was desperate, and yet, incredibly, the project still went ahead to the prototype stage. Despite how insane the whole concept sounded, the P-13A actually reached the prototype stage. By late 1944, engineers had built a glider version known as the DM-1. It didn't have an engine, instead it was meant to test the aerodynamics of the unusual delta wing design. The glider was towed into the air and released, giving test pilots a chance to see how this flying triangle actually behaved. But progress was painfully slow. Allied bombing raids repeatedly disrupted the project. The original workshop near Vienna was destroyed, forcing the team to relocate to Munich. There, they managed to keep tinkering, but time was running out. Germany was collapsing, and the war effort was crumbling on every front. Even Alexander Lippisch himself seemed to lose faith. By early 1945, records suggest he already knew the coal-powered jet would never become operational. Instead, he may have kept the project alive for a very different reason, to protect his team. By keeping his engineers and students tied up on essential aircraft research, he may have been shielding them from being drafted into the front lines. In other words, this impossible jet may have doubled as a lifeline for the very people building it. And that's exactly where American paratroopers found them in Munich, still working on the DM-1, just weeks before the war ended. When American troops stormed into Munich in 1945, they didn't just capture the city, they captured the future. Inside the workshop, they found the unfinished DM-1 glider, stacks of blueprints, and Lippisch's entire engineering team. To the Allies, it was a gold mine. While the coal-powered engine was never taken seriously, the radical Delta Wing design caught their attention immediately. Instead of discarding the project as Nazi desperation, the U.S. military seized it as valuable research material. The DM-1 was shipped to America, where tests continued under Allied supervision. And though Libish himself wasn't the mastermind behind America's first Delta Wing jet, his work undeniably influenced the field. Just months later, Convair was already developing the XF-92, a sleek Delta Wing interceptor that carried echoes of the P-13A shape. German research hadn't built the plane, but had accelerated American innovation by years. For Lippisch, capture wasn't the end, it was a new beginning. Rather than facing trial or obscurity, he was brought into the U.S. aviation world. After the war, he worked with Convair and continued designing, this time for his former enemies. The man who once tried to build a coal-powered kamikaze jet for Hitler was now helping shape the jet age in America. When the war ended, the Lippisch P-13A became little more than a strange footnote in aviation history. But its echoes carried far beyond Germany's ruins. Alexander Libisch himself was brought to the United States under Operation Paperclip. Unlike other German engineers, he wasn't given the spotlight of rocket pioneers like Werner von Braun. Instead, he worked quietly, contributing to aerodynamic research and delta wing concepts, which were soon being tested in American jet projects. He became a U.S. citizen in 1950 and continued to publish ideas until his death in 1976. But the question remains, what exactly was the P-13A? Was it ever meant to fly, or was it simply a desperate proposal designed to keep students and engineers busy, shielding them from being 
being sent to the front lines. The design itself seems almost contradictory brilliant in its aerodynamics, but absurd in its choice of coal as fuel. Some historians argue that Lippisch was serious, pushing the limits of unconventional thinking in a time of crisis. Others believe it was closer to sabotage, a paper project that looked advanced on paper but would never work in reality. And yet, the Delta Wing lived on. In the 1950s, American prototypes like the Convair XF-92 bore a striking resemblance to Lippisch's work. By the 1960s, the shape appeared again in high-speed jets and even spacecraft designs. What began as a desperate German experiment left fingerprints on the future of aviation. So the P-13A lingers in history not as a weapon of war, but as a symbol of one of the strangest crossroads of technology and desperation. Was it madness? Was it genius? Or maybe it was both.